Welcome to the first edition of the FICO, Score a Better Future Credit Conversation presented by FICO. This is a forum where we uh, break down important basics and tools and topics around credit and FICO scores. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Quinn, and I work in the scores team supporting our solutions that help people become more credit and power. Well, there's no doubt that the holidays are in full throttle here. We are barraged by holiday decor, music, and decorations at every store. Even my eight-year-old son has already uh, revised his gift list several times after seeing the endless toy and electronic commercials that uh, surface this time of year on TV, uh, which is why we are really excited to have our special guest, Tommy Lee, Senior Director here at FICO, with us today to have a conversation about how holiday shopping may impact your FICO scores and how to best manage your credit uh, this holiday season and beyond. Thanks for joining us, Tommy. Thank you, Tom, for having me and happy holidays. Thank you very much too. Uh, let's dig in uh, right, uh, right away. So um, the National Retail Federation said it expects this year's holiday sales during November and December to rise about 50% for a total of 850 billion, and yes, that's B with a billion of dollars of sales in large, a large percent of these sales will be purchases made with credit cards. Uh, Tommy, can you share some insights into the historical holiday credit balance trends FICO has observed over time? I would imagine that the average card balance has increased during the holiday period. Do the trends uh, differ by segment of population, millennials versus Gen Z, for example? Uh, yes, thanks, Tom. We do, in fact, typically see that Americans spend more during the holidays, no surprise, and they have higher credit card balances in January than in October of the previous year. Younger consumers, particularly those age 18 to 34, so yes, the Gen Z population, they do have the highest credit card balance percentage increase of any of the age groups we looked at. It's a 5% increase. Um, but that's also partly because they have a, a lower credit card balance prior to the holiday sh shopping period. Last year was quite unusual um, for many reasons, uh, but for this one as well, uh, we found that consumers increased their credit card balances less than they typically do during the holidays because of pandemic related reasons, uh, such as receiving government stimulus money that they could use to pay down their credit card debt and fewer opportunities to spend on travel and entertainment. The increase in average revolving debt, uh, which is such as credit card debt, uh, from October 2020 to January 2021 was only $73. And that's substantially lower than the $250 or more increase in revolving debt that we typically see during the holiday shopping period. That's interesting. I know in thinking about my own spending from last uh, holiday season last year to this year, planned spending, it definitely was a lot less just even not driving around and going out to dinner and meeting friends. Um, but the, the $73 seems kind of low to me. I was kind of surprised by that. Uh, can you help explain, you know, such a low figure when I think most people think that would be higher? Sure. So, uh, here we're looking at the average increase of $73. So of course, many consumers will have much higher uh, credit card balance increases uh, during that time, while some will have less than that. One thing to keep in mind too, is that we're comparing January specifically to October. So some people may do their holiday shopping earlier, uh, such as in November, and then they may pay off their credit card uh, balances in full uh, in December, such that by January, uh, there really isn't a increase in their uh, uh, card spending. So it, part of it is related to that as well. Oh, well, I'm quite envious of people who have already got their shopping done in October and November. That's certainly not the case on in my home. Uh, with this information about increased spending and keeping in mind the holidays, you know, it's important to, to keep in mind that the holidays are a time of uh, giving and festivities. So it's uh, common for people to increase their spending around this time of year for gift giving, et cetera. I know my own credit cards get kind of a good workout during December. So, you know, we just want to stress that it's, it's not a bad thing to potentially spend a little bit more during the holidays, but uh, it becomes a problem when it leads to significantly higher credit card balances, which could lead to mispayments, which could then 
have a negative impact on your FICO scores. Um, what impacts can this increase in credit card usage potentially have on a person's FICO score? Yeah, so the increase, increased credit card usage can definitely impact the FICO score as it impacts the two most important factors of the FICO score. Uh, so the most important factor being payment history, which is whether or not you make your payments on time, which makes up roughly 35% of the FICO score calculation. The second most important factor is amounts owed, and that makes up roughly 30% of the FICO score. And then within the amounts owed category, an important uh, variable that the FICO score looks at is credit card utilization, which is your credit card balances compared to your credit card limits. So not only will increasing your credit card balances hurt you in this particular uh, characteristic and this category, uh, but it also may lead you to becoming overextended and possibly more likely to miss payments, the first uh, category that I mentioned. Now, on the other hand, people with lower debt and lower credit utilizations tend to be less likely to miss payments. And so they're rewarded by the score for their more careful use of credit. Now, to quantify the impact that a holiday ramp up in revolving debt can have on your FICO score, uh, the FICO analytic team analyzed score shifts of consumers who had an increase of 10% or more in their revolving debt between October and January of the following year. And what we found was that of this particular population, almost twice as many consumers see their FICO score decrease compared to increase between October and January. 57% had a decrease while only 33% had an increase. And in fact, one in five of these consumers who had an increase of 10% or more in their spending had a FICO score decrease of 20 points or more, which is much higher than the total population. Well, a lot of statistics there, measurements. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting, we get calls from consumers here I go with questions about their FICO scores. And so, um, you know, having your score drop 10 or 15 points while, um, you know, is of concern, it may not be as concerning depending on where you start in the scale. So someone who mm. loses 15 points for a month or two that has a high score versus someone that has a low score, can you help explain kind of the impact of relativity, relativity there in terms of where your starting score is? Yeah, so that is a great point, Tom, and absolutely your starting score is very important when considering a score change of, say, for example, 10 points, as you mentioned. So if you can imagine someone who has a FICO score of 820 pristine credit, um, has a little bit of holiday spending, and sees their FICO score decrease to 810, uh, in the grand scheme of things, that won't really impact uh, how lenders evaluate them. Uh, they'll still have the uh, opportunity to get the best interest rates on any loans that they apply for and uh, would almost be very likely to be able to obtain credit. Now, it probably does matter more for consumers who are near strategic cutoff points for lenders. So for example, as someone who had a FICO score of 655 and saw their FICO score decrease by 10 points to 645, that may have more of an impact to that individual if they're looking for credit in the short term, because uh, you know, that is closer to a strategic point for lender lending decisions. Great point there, Tommy. So I think one of the key messages is if you, this holiday season, if you know that you're gonna be needing credit in the beginning part of the year, buy a car or maybe refinance your mortgage, et cetera, to think about your, your spending at Christmas and make sure that uh, you don't overindulge that could uh, impact your score for that, you know, range of purchase you need to make in the beginning of the year. Well, great information, Tommy. Uh, let's reintroduce ourselves to viewers who may have just joined us. Uh, I'm Tom Quinn. I work at the FICO and the Scores team, supporting our solutions that help people become more credit empowered. Uh, our guest today is Senior Director here at FICO, Tommy Lee. Tommy's been providing us insights into holiday shopping and what impacts your uh, FICO score can the uh, take with that. So let's get back into the, the session. Um, according to a recent payment journal article, the second largest bank, which happens to be the Bank of America, 
said that the number of customers carrying balances on their credit cards instead of paying them off every month is slightly creeping up before the holidays. Uh, with that in mind, you know, what are some uh, good practices that our viewers can adopt to reduce their uh, potential negative impacts on their FICO score from holiday shopping season? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, thanks for asking that question, Tom. Firstly, I would strongly encourage everyone to make a plan to prevent overspending. And the way to do that may vary from person to person. So here are some possible ideas. Make a list and a budget of planned purchases, and then monitor your holiday spending and stick to that plan and budget. Another option is to opt to shop with cash to prevent from overspending, as some people uh, do spend less when they literally have to transfer paper dollars to someone else. They really see that hard-earned money go to someone else. Otherwise, resist opening store credit cards. So many stores and online retailers will provide you with some incentives, um, some small knickknack to try to get you to sign up for instant credit while you're making a purchase. And if you agree, it is likely that that retailer will pull your credit report. Um, and if you're approved, then you'll get a new credit account and you'll have more balances uh, from your purchases uh, on a credit account that's reported to the credit bureaus within the next month. And so the posting of that inquiry, the reporting of that new account and the incremental balance will all potentially have a negative impact to your FICO score. Um, additionally, this is one of my favorites. Consider gifts that you don't purchase. Uh, for example, the best gift you could give parents of young children might be to offer to babysit their children. And I have a three-year-old and a six-month-old, and I would love for someone to babysit my children. Uh, and then finally, uh, encourage, I'd encourage everyone to pay your bills on time and pay your credit card balances in full, if at all possible. That's yeah, some really great advice there, Tommy, especially the... the, the idea about the gifts don't have to be something you purchase. It can be something that you do for someone. So um, I'll be looking forward to you offering to wash my car as a Christmas present this year. <laughs> um, so uh, lots of great information shared here. So one of the other things that we like to talk about is making sure that people know that they should uh, periodically check their credit reports and stay on top of that. And um, and check your scores and make sure everything's in line. And you can get credit reports for free by going to a site called annualcreditreport.com. It's been a site that was created by the FTC in partnership with the credit reporting agencies. And you can go on there. It's very easy and simple to use to get access to your three credit reports and um, uh, the opportunity to make sure that everything's being reported accurately. Um, historically, they have allowed you to get up to one free credit report per year per bureau, but with the pandemic, um, they actually are allowing consumers, I think through March to be able to get, or through April, to be able to get um, access to their scores, uh, their credit reports on a weekly basis for no charge. So take advantage of that. Um, and we also encourage you to visit uh, educational websites such as scorebetterfuture.com. Um, this is a, program that FICO has created that uh, helps consumers gain understanding into how their credit score works and the actions they can take to manage their credit over time. Um, and we uh, also offer Score Better Future webinars, et cetera, that uh, will uh, allow consumers to, to see a presentation about how score works and then also give them opportunity to uh, sync up with uh, financial counseling from approved financial counseling uh, entities out there. So. Uh, be sure to check out the website and, uh, and see when the next uh, Score Better Future uh, event is taking place and sign up to take advantage of that. Well, I'd like to thank our wonderful guest, Tommy Lee, uh, for joining us today for the first Score Better Future credit conversation. Um, I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did too. Um, and we uh, hope you will be able to take away a few things that uh, were covered today in our conversation and use it to apply it to your own credit empowerment situation and goals. And we certainly wish all of you out there a happy holiday and the best in 2022. 
Thank you, Tom. Happy holidays, everyone.